Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be looking at a system of equations and inequalities and find the maximum and minimum of a given expression subject to the system. So let's start by um, completing the square here. If you wanted to pause the video at this point and try the problem yourself, you're more than welcome to do so. Okay, let's take a look. Uh, the first one can be written as x plus 1 squared plus y plus 2 squared, if you go ahead and complete the squares here, is equal to 5 squared, or you can just write it as 25. The second equation can be written as z squared plus w minus 1 squared is equal to 144, because you're supposed to add 1 to both sides. And you can write that as 12 squared. And the last expression, we're going to be using some uh, factoring tricks here, uh, including Simon. For example, if you consider xw minus x plus w, uh, we can just go ahead and uh, subtract 1 from both sides. Actually, we can go ahead and put 6 to 1 on the other side. So let me go ahead and do that here. So we're going to be getting... Um, xw minus x plus w and then what I need to do here is minus 1 and then the other two terms yz plus 2z we can just pull out a z there and write it as y plus 2 and this is going to be greater than or equal to 60 because I subtracted 1 from both sides and this expression can be written as x times w minus 1 plus 1 times w minus 1 plus z times the quantity y plus 2 is greater or equal to 60. Now here x uh, w minus 1 is a common factor, so I can just go ahead and pull that out. This is going to give me x plus 1, and z times y plus 2 is greater than or equal to 60. Okay, so basically what I have is I do have two equations and an inequality that I can work with. Okay. But if you notice that we have the w minus 1 appearing in both of these and then x plus 1 and y plus 2. So at this point, I think it'll be appropriate if you make some trigonometric substitutions. So we can go ahead and assume that x plus 1 can be written as 5 cosine alpha, where alpha is between 0 and 2 pi. And then y plus 2 can be written as 5 sine alpha because sine squared alpha plus cosine squared alpha is equal to 1. So this satisfies the equation. And of course, it should also satisfy all uh, the other equations as well. But if we continue in this manner, uh, for the second equation, we can just go ahead and say that z is equal to the 12 times the cosine beta. Beta is just another angle. And then for w minus 1, we can safely say that 12 sine beta. Okay? So all these substitutions is actually going to give us something nice uh, in number 3. Because we can just go ahead and plug those in there. And that should give us 12 sine b, I mean beta, multiplied by 5 cosine alpha plus z which is 12 cosine beta multiplied by 5 sine alpha and this expression needs to greater needs to be greater than or equal to 60 okay so that's basically the inequality that i'm going to work off of so and this is actually a known expression because if you kind of look at the numbers the 12 times 5 is 60 so we have we can pull out the 60 and then we're going to be getting Sine, al sine beta cosine alpha plus cosine beta sine alpha, which can be written as the sine of alpha plus beta. Okay, and that should equal greater than or equal to 60. We can divide both sides by 60 and this should give us sine alpha plus beta is greater than or equal to 1. But as we know, sine of any angle, including alpha plus beta, always needs to be less than or equal to 1 by definition. So these two inequalities taken together means that sine alpha plus beta needs to equal 1. 
Okay, this is basically where everything breaks down. And at this point, um, this equation is actually going to have solutions if uh, alpha plus beta is actually equal to pi over 2. So we can safely say that alpha plus beta can be written as pi over 2 plus 2 pi n, which is multiples of 2 pi. And then from here, obviously, since alpha and beta are complementary angles in this sense, then we can safely say that uh, cosine of beta is the same as sine of alpha and the sine of beta is the same as cosine of alpha, okay? So now, so far we haven't really looked at the expression given to us because basically our goal is to maximize and minimize this expression, which is y squared over 25 plus w squared over 144. So let's go ahead and write that down here. Our expression is going to be y squared over 25 plus w squared over 144. Okay, now from the expressions that we, or from the substitutions that we uh, used, since y plus 2 is equal to 5 sine alpha, from here we can write that y is equal to 5 sine alpha minus 2, and that's going to be squared, and 25 at the bottom. And then for the... Um, for the other expression, w, we know that uh, w minus 1 is equal to 12 sine beta, so we can replace w with 12 sine beta plus 1, 12 sine beta plus 1, and that will be squared and divided by 144. Okay, but here's the thing. Since alpha and beta are complementary, sine beta can be replaced with cosine alpha, in this expression. So let's go ahead and do that. It's going to give us 5 sine alpha minus 2 quantity squared divided by 25. And this will be 12 cosine alpha plus 1 squared and that divided by 144. Okay. So let's go ahead and uh, expand this and let's see what happens. Obviously, we're going to be getting some terms with sine squared and cosine squared and um, you know, after making a common denominator, I think we should uh, get a constant from there. And uh, let's see what we are going to be getting from here. Okay. All right. So if you go ahead and expand this, you're going to be getting 25, 25 sine squared alpha minus 20 sine alpha plus 4 over 25. And then from this one, you're going to be getting 144 cosine squared alpha plus 24 cosine alpha plus 1, and that divided by 144. And then if you go ahead and distribute this, we're going to be getting sine squared alpha from here. And then if you simplify, you're going to be getting 4 fifths of sine alpha plus 4 over 25. And then from here, we're going to be getting cosine squared alpha plus 24 goes into 244 uh, six times. So that's going to be 1 over 6 times cosine of alpha. And finally, we're going to be getting 100, 1 over 144. Okay. So basically, this is the expression that we're trying to maximize and minimize uh, given the constraints in the equations and inequalities. So let's go ahead and work off of that. First of all, realize that sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1. So we're going to be getting 1 from here, and then we're going to be getting 4 over 25, and then 1 over 144. These fractions can all be added. Plus, now we should get a um, trigonometric expression here, but that's for the same angle. So we can actually easily minimize and maximize it because they're both alpha. Okay, at this point, I'm just going to use a shortcut instead of just proving this because that will take time. Uh, but... If you go ahead and add these up uh, to save you all the trouble, uh, I've done the work for you. So that's going to actually equal, uh, and the common denominator needs to be, this is 5 squared, this is 12 squared. So it's going to be 60 squared because they're relatively prime. So it's going to be 4,201 divided by 3,600. That's the constant. 
And then now for that part, I'm just gonna go ahead and work it out here. So what do we need to know if you have a sine alpha plus b cosine alpha, then the maximum value of this expression is gonna be the square root of a squared plus b squared, and the minimum value is gonna be negative of that expression. Now, this can be proved very easily uh, by replacing these um, two angles, uh, you know, just pull out a number and then write it as a sum of uh, two angles, sine of two angles, and then you can just prove it from there. But that's probably gonna be another video. Uh, but uh, let's go ahead and use these shortcuts for now. Uh, so minimum and the maximum values are given by that. So all you have to do is then just calculate these values and write them here. And obviously the, one of them is positive, the other one is negative. So we can just write it with a plus minus sign. And if you go ahead and calculate this, the square root of 16 over 25 plus 1 over 36. Again, uh, we're going to make a common denominator here. Let's go ahead and try to simplify this. Uh, this is 5 squared. That's 6 squared. Again, we, we don't have any common factors. And if you do the math, uh, and you're going to be getting the square root of 601 divided by 30. So that's going to be our additional term here that comes from the sine alpha and cosine alpha. So our expression can be minimized and maximized by these values. Okay. Thank you for watching. Uh, please like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one. Bye-bye.